Welcome. The vision, mission, objectives and strategy, or VMOS, of Flight Centre Travel Group has consistently embraced change, profit and growth as constants and with an industry heavily influenced by externalities, this approach to change management has demonstrated success. However, more focus is required to ensure the VMOS aligns with employee performance management and rewards, with opportunities already underway shifting away from the 90s KPI model towards one that focuses on leadership driving behaviours of staff. FCTG regularly communicates within the business the notion that what gets rewarded gets done. And whilst there is evidence that supports this, financially rewarding individual employees through bonuses against KPIs can contradict the VMOS. Travel consultants are the bulk of Flight Centre Travel Group's workforce and incentivizing margin as part of a bonus scheme has resulted in poor behaviours through conflicts of interest. This is evidenced in many sales roles where consultants will mark up the booking for increased margin, opt to purchase through a non-preferred supplier to increase margin at the cost of reduced support services and reduced income from supply kickbacks for selling bulk product, and disregard service-related queries to aim for sales. Contextual rewards are required based on individual employee needs, which are both intrinsic and extrinsic. These can be delivered through a strong focus on leadership development to drive the right behaviours and create team environments that enable KPIs to indirectly reward employees. Indirect rewards not part of the employee's agreed remuneration scheme for individuals can include financial rewards, monthly awards and vouchers, educational trips to travel destinations, access to bonus shares with those purchased, access to phone and laptop for remote home access, additional annual leave. Non-financial awards could be higher responsibilities and decision-making, time in lieu, flexibility in work arrangements, professional development opportunities, and access to advice services. Having a mixed suite of rewards that leaders can provide individual staff based on their performance ensures the context of the individual's requirements are addressed, as evidenced by Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Leaders can use KPIs as evidence in assessing performance to engage in honest discussions with staff where they need to perform and align with the business VMOS. Such an approach aligns to the growth strategy for Flight Center Travel Group while simultaneously addressing the quality control strategy in improving the customer experience. Similarly, senior and mid-level leadership require incentives and rewards also to attract strong leadership qualities and retain existing talent. This approach to talent management is fundamental and critical to aligning to Flight Center Travel Group's core philosophies, particularly irreverence and egalitarianism. Ego often can create poor outcomes in leadership where an individual's behavior is driven around themselves and can be to the detriment of the business goals and the employees around them. There is also evidence that suggests once remuneration hits a critical point, other intrinsic non-financial rewards for leaders are prioritised for job satisfaction, and Flight Centre Travel Group can leverage off this approach, assisting with leadership development for the benefit of the business and the individual leader's own career progression. Through such an approach, the cost to the business of leadership is reduced, whilst also reducing costs from poor employee performance with increased revenue and also reducing errors. Depending on the industry, it could be seen that rewarding the networks and expertise brought by senior leaders should be the primary focus. There are broader implications of having a senior management focused reward scheme beyond the immediate requirement of managing performance and retaining talent. These implications are linked to the ethics and morality of rewarding a niche sector of your business and how these decisions affect other stakeholders. For Flight Centre Travel Group to take such an approach would be in direct contradiction of their core philosophies, primarily egalitarianism and irreverence. The business rewarding senior leaders and strategists who are not customer facing is unjustified for surviving in an environment of high customer service demand. Additionally, the level of bonus requirement would need to scale respectively to a percentage of higher remuneration meaning that should the business require senior staff to forego bonuses for the business to survive, the behavioural implications are likely to be more significant with a higher loss of income for the individual. There are reports on these behaviours in Disney, 
demonstrating how Disney's senior leaders with multi-million dollar bonuses are vocally resistant to temporarily foregoing bonuses. Similarly, for other internal stakeholders at lower levels of remuneration, behavioral implications of hard business decisions may result in staff feeling the business decision of reducing costs whilst continuing to reward senior leaders doesn't align to the message being portrayed. This could result in a demotivated workforce feeling underappreciated at a time when the business needs them to excel. Externally, there are also the implications on public relations, with the perception that a business who takes this approach may not align to the values of the customers who may opt to purchase elsewhere. Elaborating further on this, in times of hard business decisions such as the COVID-19 business environment, this approach is unsustainable. Ferguson highlights also the implications on investors also can be felt and may result in divestment in shares when the business requires liquidity to ensure cash flow during reduced trade. There are many psychological models that exist for leaders to gain insight in how business decisions impact employee behaviours. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a primary example of the complexity of requirements for all staff and no role should be exempt from consideration. Mental cognition and ability. Without focus on managing performance on individuals at lower levels, employee will not have clear goals, guidelines, and expectations from senior management, thus deviating from the business's VMOS. Similarly, in times of rapid change, the efficacy of change management may be impeded without focus on rewarding employees' performance at lower levels, contradicting change management models. Motivation, intrinsic. If you have a loss of motivation, habits, and routines, without focus on performance management systems and rewarding good behaviours through verbal acknowledgement, staff will feel undervalued and disenfranchised. These feelings lead to reduced performance and employees lose focus on tasks, lose their routine, and development of poor habits that are self-focused. Unfavourable work environment. Leadership not focusing on rewarding those who perform and disciplining those who underperform will have high achievers left feeling their efforts are in vain. Loss of healthy competition. With businesses focused on the higher executives, employees will feel their performance does not matter. Alternatively, there is a risk of toxic competition where employees feel they need to discredit and hinder others to make themselves appear more effective. Motivation extrinsic. Rewards. Without rewards, both verbal and financial, employees will not feel acknowledged when they perform. Additionally, the disparity in total remuneration between senior leaders and lower staff may leave staff feeling disempowered and lost. Performance evaluation. Linked to intrinsic motivations, if staff are not receiving focus on, from performance management systems, genuine conversations are less likely to occur. Not only do these engagements provide opportunity to motivate, they also provide leaders insight into what is happening and career development for the individual. Career progression. With significant disparity in wage for employees to move upwards towards their career goals, they may see the effort not worthwhile if not adequately remunerated for those efforts. This may leave employees feeling undervalued and seeking alternative employers. Ultimately, for rewards to be effective and to align employee behaviours towards positive outcomes, they must meet four key criteria. Fairness, accountability, responsibility, and transparency. When it comes to creating an effective reward strategy for business, often the best approach is a total reward strategy with mixed monetary components and non-monetary socio-emotional components. The benefits of this approach extend beyond the employee also, enabling the business new opportunities to structure teams, rosters, and enable sustainable value creation. For example, taking this approach may see those in senior roles receiving a 60% base financial remuneration and 40% alternative reward arrangement of flexible financial and quality of life aspects. Flexibility. Many businesses are experiencing the request of flexibility and flexible work arrangements for experienced professionals juggling their work-life balance around families. Offering the value of being able to meet work requirements around their routines without compromising the needs of customers and enabling remote work access can retain experienced staff whilst attracting others. At a lower level, employees may be offered the same approach to flexibility, however, with a higher financial component in the base remuneration, making the wage livable. Enabling flexibility with remote access offers other unforeseen benefits, 
such as should the building need to be evacuated in an emergency, remote access users are still available to assist customers. Reimbursement bonuses and shares. Other indirect financial benefits can be role-specific, such as reimbursements, where employees who are travelling on the road may receive travel and meal allowances. Those employees who regularly engage in meetings can benefit from the latest smart technology devices, which the company then can claim on tax. Shares and share schemes enable true buy-in for staff and create business advocacy, providing bonus shares for each purchased by employees or as part of their remuneration encourages revenue raising for the business whilst creating personal interest in business performance. Lastly, bonuses based on individual and team performance are a consideration as outlined previously. Taking the total reward strategy, the business is enabled to customize employee remuneration packages to their needs, creating value that is relevant to their circumstances. I hope this presentation has highlighted the opportunities for the business and provided insight into potential challenges we could face. Thank you.